This is the second tutorial in a series on making a drive around collecting game. In this part I'll show you how to add sound effects and how to make the gemstones spin. To start I'm going to load the file from the end of the previous tutorial. To collect the emerald the car drives into it. The emerald has a near sensor and when any object comes near to it, a signal is sent through to an edit object actuator which will end the emerald object and a message actuator which will send a message saying score 100. I want to add a sound when the emerald is collected and the normal way to do that would be to add a sound actuator but because the edit object ends the emerald object the sound isn't played we have a problem playing a sound in response to a near event. There is a simple alternative. We can play a sound in response to this message being received. Well, this message is received by the empty. So if I select the empty, this is the message sensor that senses the score 100 message and sends a signal. So if I add a sound actuator here, I want to close this logic brick up. And before I do that, I'm going to give it a meaningful name and click the white triangle to close it up. Click the open button. Go to the folder where you have your sound effects. Select sound file. I'm going for a cache register. Click open. Scrolling down we have various options. The most important is to change play stop to play end. Once it starts playing the file it will play it to the end. Connect that up and click the start button, press the forward arrow and we hear the cache register. I'm going to give the logic brick a meaningful name, cache reg. I'm going to close up the logic brick and use the up arrow to group the emerald logic bricks together. I'm going to scroll up so I can add another sound actuator. Click open and when a ruby is collected, I want a bell sound effect. Connect that up and don't forget to change play stop to play end. Click start and forward and right and we get the bell sound. I want to add an engine rev sound effect when the forward and back arrows are pressed. So I'm selecting the car and I'm going to add a sound actuator. Click open and I'm going to add a rev engine sound effect. I want the sound effect to be played when the back arrow or the front arrow are played. So I'm going to select an OR controller. Connect the gas is the forward arrow. Reverse is the back arrow. Connect that up and don't forget to change play stop to play end. Click start and when I press the back arrow we get the rev sound and when I press the forward arrow we get the rev sound. Next I want to make the gemstones spin continuously. To animate objects in the game engine you either use the physics engine to move objects or you use an action actuator to play animations. I'm going to make a rotate action to make the rotate action, I'm going to change the layout to default. In the view menu, I'm going to toggle quad view. I'm going to drag on the white diagonal lines to open up a new window, and I'm going to make the new window a dope sheet window. Select the ruby and set the total length of the animation to 35 frames. Change the dope sheet mode to action editor. I'm ready to insert the first keyframe. Go to frame 1, make change. I want the Z rotation to be 0, I don't need to change it. Insert keyframe, right click, insert single keyframe. For the next keyframe, go to frame 35, make change, set the Z rotation to 350 degrees. Insert keyframe, right click, insert single keyframe. The playback of the action will be looped, so when the ruby gets to 350 degrees, it will loop back to 0 degrees, completing the rotation. 
if I press play, the ruby doesn't spin at a constant speed. To fix that, in the key menu, change the interpolation mode from Bezier to linear. Now if we press play, the ruby spins at a constant speed. Spin speed is a bit fast, so I'm going to double the length of the animation to 70 frames, and that will halve the spin speed. I could delete the keyframe and reinsert a keyframe. I'm going to pan, shift and drag with the middle mouse button in the dope sheet, put the keyframes in the middle. Then I'm going to zoom in till I see 70. Then I'm going to select the end keyframe, press G to grab, and move that down to frame 70. Now when I press play, the ruby spins at a slower speed. I'm going to change the name of the action to rotate. I'm going to go back to game logic layout. With the ruby selected, I'm going to add an always sensor and an action actuator. I'm going to give this logic brick a meaningful name, score 10, and close it up. Set the action to rotate. Set the play mode to loop end. Set the start frame to frame 1, and the end frame to frame 70. Add an AND controller, and connect that up. Click the start button and the ruby should rotate continuously. Do the same for the emerald. Select it, add an always sensor, an AND controller and an action actuator. I'm going to give this logic brick a meaningful name and close it up. Set the play mode to loop end the action to rotate, the start frame to frame 1 and the end frame to frame 70. Connect that up and press the start button and the both gemstones should now rotate. Next I'm going to make a simple ramp. I'm going to change the layout to default I'm going to close the dope sheet window by dragging on the white diagonal lines. I'm going to drag with the middle mouse button to rotate the view. In the outliner window, I'm going to hide the plane and scroll down and hide the car. I'm going to add mesh cube. To make a wedge shape, go into edit mode and vertex select mode. Select a vertex, hold down shift and select a second vertex. In the mesh menu, vertices, merge, notice shortcut key is Alt M and merge at last. Select a vertex, hold down shift, select a second vertex, Alt and M and this time it will be merge at first. Go back into object mode and I'm going to name the object ramp. In the add menu, I'm going to add another cube, and I'm going to call this new cube platform, and I'm going to move it forward using the tip of the green arrow. I've made the ramp and the platform before, so I'm just going to enter the location and scale values. Select the ramp and set the Y location to be 4, the Z location to be 1, and the Y scale, I'm going to stretch it by a factor of 2. Zoom back with the mouse wheel, pan, shift the middle mouse button, select the cube, set its Y location to be 14, and its Z location to be 1.8. Set its Y scale to be 8, and its Z scale to be 0.2. I've placed the gemstones before, so I'm just going to enter their locations. Select the ruby, set the X location to be 0, the Y location to be 8, and the Z location to be 3. Select the emerald, set its Y location to be 20, and its Z location to be 3. 
select the ruby, hold down shift and press D to duplicate, immediately followed by enter. Set the Y location of the duplicate to be 12. With the cursor in the 3D view, hold down shift, press D and enter and set the Y location of the duplicate to 16. That's finished, so I'm going to go back into Game Logic Layout. I'm going to redisplay the plane and the car. Hit the start button, and we have sound effects and spinning gemstones. That's the end of the tutorial. I'll put the start file and the end file and the sound files for you to download at my website www.freemovies.co.uk at the Blender channel there. Thanks for watching 